Hi, I'm Connie and I answer technical questions at Aero Marine Products. Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions asking me how to strengthen a joint. Let's go ahead and talk about what a joint is. A joint is the area where two pieces of wood come together at any angle. You can see this here is a 90 degree angle and it has a fillet in it. The purpose of a fillet is to round out the area of a joint so that it's easier to apply fiberglass cloth and to strengthen the joint. You'll notice the rounded edge. This can be made with a PVC pipe that's been cut off and you can go like this or a lot of old boat guys do it with plastic spoons. And they simply go like this. The way that we made this fillet was with 321 epoxy and milled fibers for strength. Something you wanna be aware of when making your fillet is to make sure you get rid of the waste on the top and bottom edges so that you don't have to sand it off later. If you have any more questions about how to make a fillet or using any of the epoxy fillers, you can refer to our video called How to Use Epoxy Fillers on aeromarineproducts.com. Now that your fillets have cured, you can go ahead and start applying your fiberglass and your epoxy. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick for how to help your fiberglass cloth have crisp, clean edges. What we have here is a piece of six ounce plain weave fiberglass cloth. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a cool shortcut to help you cut fiberglass easier. This works a lot better if it's on a flat surface. What you can kind of do is separate out the strands. You're going to pull one carefully while keeping the rest of it flat. You're going to lightly apply your hand to the other side and you're going to pull this string. Now we have a straight line that will help us guide our scissors while cutting the fiberglass cloth. Now we're going to go ahead and cut this. Keep it as flat as you can with light but firm hands on both sides and slowly use your scissors to cut the line that you made. We now have a nice clean straight edge. So now we're getting ready to apply our fiberglass and our epoxy. Today we decided to use a six ounce cloth with a plain weave and we've decided to use three layers that are the same width in descending lengths. You can use whatever fiberglass you think would work for your project. A really good way to figure out how much epoxy to fiberglass cloth is to go with the ratio of one part epoxy to one part fiberglass cloth. So if you weigh your fiberglass cloth and it weighs 15 ounces, you can mix up 15 ounces of epoxy and that'll help you get started wetting out your fiberglass cloth. If you have to use a little bit more epoxy, that's perfectly fine. You just want to make sure that the epoxy isn't oozing or dripping out of your project. Now that my fiberglass cloth is ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and set this down and mix the epoxy. Today we're going to use the Aeromarine Products 321 non-blushing epoxy. It's a 2 to 1 mix ratio, which means 2 parts of the 300 resin to 1 part of the 21. When you buy this resin, it comes with a technical data sheet that will tell you exactly how you need to measure and mix it. On our website, aeromarineproducts.com, we have a video titled Double Mix and Pour that will show you exactly how to mix the Aeromarine Products 321 epoxy resin correctly. Now that we have mixed and measured our epoxy correctly, I'm going to go ahead and start applying it to the fiberglass cloth. You can see we have the three pieces here. We're gonna go ahead and set these two pieces aside. We're gonna go ahead and position the one that has the longest length first. I find it really easy to take your paintbrush, dip it in the epoxy, and tack the edges up to keep it in place. Kind of helps it stay. And now that it's more or less staying put, you can go ahead and start applying the epoxy. You can use a foam roller as well. I prefer a chip brush. You're just going for a really thin layer. You know that the fiberglass cloth is fully wetted out once it's completely transparent. 
This first layer of cloth, it's okay to have a little bit of ex excess epoxy because you're going to apply more layers. You do want to try and get as many air bubbles out of this as possible. And just make sure that it's not oozing out. And that you get all of the cloth completely transparent so that there aren't any white spots. Now that I have this piece of cloth completely wetted out, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a plastic spreader basically and I'm going to carefully run it across the edges, get out the excess epoxy. That also helps me get the air bubbles out. You can always use your paintbrush to go down the middle as well. That's usually where you're going to see the most air bubbles. Now that this one's completely wetted out and looks like there aren't many air bubbles, I'm going to go ahead and start applying the second layer of cloth. This is a little easier because it has epoxy on it already, so you just go ahead and center it where you need it to be. It's okay if you get a little bit of fraying on the ends or something like that. You can always sand that once it's cured if you need to, or apply another coat once this is cured. Just pat it down lightly with your hands, and then you can go ahead and take your paintbrush and start applying epoxy to that layer. Now you just wet the cloth out like you did before. Be careful because now you have two layers down. You don't want to pull either of them up. Then you'll have to reposition them and that's a little frustrating. So just tap lightly with your brush. Try not to get too much excess epoxy in it. Once again, we're looking for it to be completely clear with no spots of white. Now that I have the cloth completely wetted out, I'm going to go ahead and take my plastic spreader and just get all the excess out and try and minimize the air bubbles like I did on the last layer. Now that we've got that one on there very well, we're going to go ahead and apply the last layer. You can run your finger down the middle, just pat it. Just be careful not to lift any of the fiberglass up. The reason that we are doing this in descending sizes is um, when you are using fiberglass tabbing on a project, it's generally because you need to strengthen the joint. And doing the different sizes of the fiberglass cloth helps expand the surface area of the joint and then helps strengthen your project. People would apply fiberglass tabbing most commonly to something like a stringer or a bulkhead, but you could also use this technique if you needed to do a repair on an RV. Sometimes people will use it in their garages. It's a pretty versatile technique. We're going to go ahead and just finish wetting this cloth out and then we're going to get the excess epoxy out of it again. Going to go ahead and just make sure that we get the excess epoxy out of our project. Make sure you don't lift the fiberglass cloth. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a fiberglass roller. We're just going to carefully press it in the middle and we're going to roll up. Basically what this does is this helps make sure that all of our air bubbles are gone and it kind of helps get the excess epoxy out. Just be careful not to uh, pull anything up. Do it smoothly and methodically. Once it looks like there are no air bubbles, you're good to go. So it's really important to get the air bubbles out because not only will they make your project look bad, they'll cause weak spots in your project that you'll have to go back and fix later. So now you can see the three different layers of the fiberglass cloth and how this joint will be strengthened. It has no air bubbles and there's no epoxy dripping from it. Now that we have uh, done this, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and show you what it looks like when it's cured. You can see the fillet through here. It's nice and dark and how the three layers of the fiberglass cloth are laying there. It's nice and flat and hard. If you look at it later and feel like you need more fiberglass cloth, you can definitely add it. Today we used Aeromarine Products fiberglass cloth. We carry a six ounce plain weave. Today we also used the Aeromarine Products 300 resin with the 21 hardener. Both of these products can be found at aeromarineproducts.com.